ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a show I did a while back, back in the day. Uh, welcome back to Timelines, a show where I break down some of the most complicated timelines in horror cinema. Today we are going to be talking about Friday the 13th. Now, you may be asking yourself, Friday the 13th, but Anthony, that's not that complicated. Well, in some ways it's not, but in other ways it might be, uh, because there are some continuity changes, there are some standalone films, and there's some films that actually have continuity problems, maybe. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about Friday the 13th, one of my all-time favorite uh slashers to begin with jason Voorhees, and one of my all-time favorite horror franchises uh no matter how cheesy and crappy they got they were still fun to see i don't know it's just jason getting creative with his skills i think that's what kept those films original in my opinion but yeah we're going to be breaking down the timeline barrier for friday the 13th the franchise all the way to the reboot in 2009 where we last left off with the character so without further ado let's break down the friday the 13th timeline now, for the first movie, it came out in 1980, Friday the 13th, which, of course, saw Pamela Voorhees as the main uh, protagonist for the film, who was actually the first killer throughout the franchise. We didn't really get to see Jason Voorhees as the killer until Friday the 13th Part 2, or if you count the brief dream kill he had at the end of Friday the 13th Part 1 coming out of the water. Uh, it had several sequels that followed uh, this very complicated timeline, but this was the one that started it all. Of course, Pamela Voorhees getting revenge on all the camp counselors who let her son drown. From there, released in 1981, we had Friday the 13th Part 2, which actually takes place five years after the original Friday the 13th. We see a more grown-up Jason getting his vengeance for the camp counselors who actually killed his mom because he witnessed the death of his mother, uh, which actually goes, I think, into more detail in the reboot of Friday the 13th. I believe they, watch, they show him... Uh, actually witness the killing of his mother but yeah that, that goes into more of a detail and that's where we get the first original look of jason Voorhees pre-hockey mask with the uh, hacky sack mask over his head so yeah five years after the original man that's a huge gap of where jason's been even though the movie came out the very next year obviously with the first one being very successful the second one was called for by the studio and the studio released friday the 13th part two where we saw a grown-up Jason getting revenge for his mother's death. The third part in the franchise, which is Friday the 13th Part 3 in 3D. This was a 3D film, uh, 3D horror film, where we saw a lot of cheesy 3D theatrics that took place in this film. was released in 1982. The film took place actually um, a day after the events in Part 2. So we see him gain his hockey mask in the very beginning of the film. We, I think he still has his hacky sack mask, and he gets the hockey mask eventually. Uh, and, of course, the reboot for 2009, they actually go into explanation as to how he got his hockey mask. Um, but, yeah, he goes from the hacky sack change to the hockey mask, which is more of an iconic look for Jason Voorhees. A lot of the fans know to love this look for Jason Voorhees, the iconic hockey mask of Jason Voorhees, which has gone on to be in a lot of things and been referenced in a lot of shows and, and things over the, the last couple of decades. The fourth installment of the film is Friday the 13th, the final chapter, which was released in 1984. Uh, it also took place just a couple days after part three. So this is supposedly, this was supposed to be the last movie of the Friday the 13th franchise. This is all they planned. But of course the studio making a bunch of money off these movies, they demanded more and the audience demanded more from the iconic slasher Jason Voorhees, which gave us Friday the 13th, a new beginning which was released in 1985 and it takes place several years after the final chapter. So they actually waited like a, a few years um, to kind of give a new continuity, a new storyline for Jason after the fourth one was supposed to be the final installment of the franchise. The studio wanted more, the fans wanted more. So they came out with Friday the 13th, a new beginning. And this pretty much brought back the character Jason Voorhees. Friday the 13th, Jason Lives was also released in 1986. It happens about a year after the previous installment, so we see, of course, another time jump. Uh, obviously, with these movies coming back, it, there's always a, a year or, or five-year jump, but except uh, with the exception of a couple movies that take place days after the um, the sequels. But, yeah, these I think they do that for purposes of the movie actually taking place on Friday the 13th, which is really cool. The seventh installment of the franchise, Friday the 13th, The New Blood, was released in 1987. It includes a 10-year uh, time jump from the previous film. So, yeah, that's a pretty big gap. And when we start seeing Jason more decayed, uh, he gets more brutal with his kills, more creative with his kills. 
Uh, and I believe this is one of the first times we may actually see a maskless Jason as well. I mean, you, you do see that various throughout the the films, uh, different faces and different, uh, you know, ways of, of who he looks like, which was a kind of a thing because I remember for a while they were trying to keep him with the mask on and they finally like showed his face a couple times. Uh, you see it throughout the franchise. I think he's one of the more notable mask killers that you see with his face. I mean, you don't really see that with Michael Myers who... I think he's taken off his mask like a, I think a total of maybe like three or two times. Uh, I know two for sure, which is in the very first Halloween you see his face briefly, and of course in Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 remake you see his face completely. The next installment of the Friday the 13th franchise was Friday the 13th Jason Takes Manhattan, which was released in 1989. So pretty much Jason ruled the 80s with all these films uh, just about almost every year in the 80s there was a new Jason film, or if not every other year. Uh, but Jason pretty much ruled the 80s, and this actually takes place f at least five years after Jason lives. So there's always a little jump of him supposedly being dead and then coming back to wreak havoc on uh, either counselors or, in this case, when they go to Manhattan, he just takes on all of Manhattan. It actually has one of my favorite scenes in any Friday the 13th movie where he's walking by a bunch of punks and they're listening to music and he kicks over their box and breaks the, their boom box. And they threaten to kill him, and then he lifts up his mask, and they get all scared. So that's actually a, one of the more funny things. And, and they went more of a comedic route uh, as the films went on with not only his kills, but you know his style of things and stuff. I just thought was really funny. The next installment was Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday, which was released in 1993. And it started a whole new timeline. Now, they wanted to really set up the iconic... Uh, fight. That's why I have the Freddy Krueger Funko Pop back there, if you guys can see it. But I have uh, two Jason Funko Pops and a Freddy Krueger Funko Pop. Uh, they really wanted to start the whole uh, crossover. So at the end of this one, I don't remember if it was a post credit scene or at the very end of the film, but you do see uh, Freddy Krueger get up and snatch Jason's mask back to hell where he's at as well, uh, which I which eventually down the road sets up the iconic mashup of Freddy versus Jason uh I think a slasher uh, crossover that no one asked for but was very pleased with. I don't know. I mean, I don't know the reviews on that. I don't know how people where people stand with Freddy vs. Jason. I personally like Freddy vs. Jason. I thought it was a fun film. And just to see two iconic slashes go head to head, it makes you want more of these kind of films. You know, maybe like Jason vs. Michael or like Leatherface vs. Michael or something. You know, just uh, some of the iconic slashes go head to head. That'd be really cool. And, and Freddy vs. Jason gave us that first look of that. So, uh, But Jason goes to hell. Obviously, they started the whole new timeline to set that up. Now, here's where things get a little tricky. We have, of course, Jason X, which was released in 2002. Uh, and most of it, most of the film, other than the beginning of the movie, takes place in space in the year 2455. Now, this is a very far distant future. Now, the reason behind this film is because during the making and uh, somewhat trying to gather every rights and everything between uh, Freddy and Jason for Freddy versus Jason, uh, they wanted to keep the character relevant. So they made uh, Jason X. So by the time Freddy versus Jason came out, the character was not forgotten or, you know, no one, you know, didn't remember who Jason was. Obviously, how can you forget Jason? I mean, he's one of those iconic killers with the hockey mask. Like he really set the tone of what that look looks like. And on top of that, his creative kills throughout the Friday the 13th franchise it is just phenomenal. But Jason X tried to keep the character very relevant, and I really think they did a good job doing that. Although this movie wasn't the best in the uh, Friday the 13th franchise, they really just kind of put this filler in just so you can still see this character and everything. Um, another thing to note, uh, continuity error as well. Well, not really continuity error, but they actually accidentally did this not knowing that this was going to happen in uh, Friday or in Freddy versus Jason, which is when in Freddy versus Jason, when they have the final battle between Jason and, and Freddy at Camp Crystal Lake on the dock, uh, actually Freddy cuts off uh, Jason's fingers, making him lose his grip of his machete. If you pay attention real closely in uh, Jason X, they actually still have that kind of continuity of him losing his fingers. Now, I don't know if they watched Jason X and thought maybe they should keep doing this uh, as far as how he lost his fingers. So that was really cool. Obviously, you know, Jason is pretty immortal, but he can't grow back limbs or anything. I mean, he obviously couldn't grow back fingers and everything. But I, I think Jason X gave us a new feel and look for Jason, which was something new, obviously. We haven't seen a freaking serial killer like Jason, a psychopath, go into outer space. And he's literally done everything he can here on Earth. So let's take him to outer space. I, I mean, I would personally love to see Jason see what he was like in hell. 
I think that would be a fun story or a comic book or something, but that's just me. And in 2003, we saw Freddy versus Jason, the two icons that mashed up. And definitely, definitely brought the fight. This actually takes place in the uh, continuity a few months after Jason goes to hell. So Freddy finds Jason and discovers Jason. Uh, if you guys pay attention in the movie Freddy vs. Jason, he actually tells the story of how he found Jason and he needed someone new to cause fear in Springwood again. That way they remembered who Freddy Krueger was. But Jason ends up going on a murderous rampage and Freddy cannot stop him. So Freddy has to try to stop him himself by pretty much putting him down, bringing him into the nightmare world, and overall just being a fucking badass at what Freddy does best. Uh, like I said, fun movie. I really like Freddy vs. Jason. It was one of the early horror movies that I watched when I was a young kid. That's probably what honestly struck my interest into horror was Freddy and Jason. Uh, and I just had fun watching this movie. I remember as a kid just having a good time watching this movie and overall enjoying it. And of course, the last... Um, installment that we ever saw of Jason Voorhees on the silver screen was the Friday the 13th reboot which was put out by Platinum Dunes in 2009 and that started a whole new timeline for Friday the 13th now we have some timelines that you know vary here from here but it goes all the way from I believe Jason Takes Manhattan uh, which was the final kind of wrap up of one timeline and Jason goes to hell starts our whole new timeline which includes Freddy vs. Jason and Jason X uh, those were three films that actually took place obviously Jason X taking place way far into the future but of course Freddy vs. Jason taking place only months after Jason goes to hell so obviously if you look at it there's three different timelines for the Friday the 13th franchise obviously when you want to reboot something or start something new you just kind of go off and do your own franchise but obviously we saw Friday the 13th uh, Jason goes to hell the final Friday it was still kind of part of the original timeline but kind of did its own thing as well uh, and it was definitely an interesting installment to the to the franchise alone uh, but obviously not too complicated but you know there's still some continuity parts where you're just like okay this starts this and that starts that uh we're still waiting for another sequel for friday the 13th i know the rights right now are super hard and up in the air to get as far as making another film but i hope to soon one day either continue off the 2009 movie that they did which not a lot of people were fans of i think because they made jason more of a fast moving character and more brutal i, I thought the brutality was really good uh, that's really what jason is and you know with today's technology you can actually do a lot more but I feel like him moving very fast. He was never a fast mover. He was always just kind of taking his time, much like Michael Myers and, and kind of, you know, walking around everywhere. And I think a lot of people weren't fans of that. I don't know about the story in general. I mean, I personally, myself, I was a fan of the, the reboot. Uh, but that was around the time a lot of the, you know, slashes were coming back in reboots and, and everything. So it was cool to kind of see that spawn again and, and just watch those in theaters again. But let me know what you guys think about the Friday the 13th franchise. Are you guys fans of it? Do you guys understand this continuity at all? Uh, leave your comments down below in the comment section. I'll definitely get back to you and read them and respond. Uh, leave a like on this video if you guys really enjoyed this episode of Timelines. We're going to start bringing these back every now and then and breaking down other timelines of other famous horror movies. If you guys haven't seen our previous episodes of Timelines, go check them out. We have a Paranormal Activity one. We got an Insidious one and a, and a Halloween one as well, I believe. Those are the only three I think we have out. But we have more coming soon. I have a lot more planned, so definitely check that out. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification to be aware every time we put up a new video. Also, follow us on social media at Knights of Horror on Twitter and at the Knights of Horror on Instagram. I'm your host, Anthony, from the Knights of Horror. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Timelines, and I will see you guys next time.